public, private, and static. Your programs will continue to have more and more parts, more classes, each with more methods, and making those parts work together correctly will get more complex. Always begin programs at this stage with a blueprint, like we did when we mapped out our restaurant program. As it gets more complicated, it can help to draw a diagram with arrows, called a flowchart, showing how the logic of your program, your algorithm, flows. The process of figuring this all out is called algorithmic reasoning. Flowchart segment showing how we create new employee objects. All right, so if we want to create a new employee from the employee class, we're going to need a name and an age. And after we do that, if we want to create another employee, we go back to the beginning and do it again. The way we write code can also help manage complexity. So far, we've been using keywords like public or static without fully understanding what they do, trusting there's a good reason. There is. They are there to help us implement our algorithms, and as your skills improve, you will understand more fully when and how to use these terms. As with a field, a private method can only be used within the class that it is defined in and nowhere else. All your classes and many of your methods will be public at this point so that they can be accessed and modified by other classes and methods. However, there will be a time when you may elect to keep a method private for the same reason you keep a field private. Java does allow private classes, even though it might seem like nothing would be able to access them, but you will not need to use them for the AP exam. There's also the keyword protected, but we won't use it until later on, when inheritance and subclasses are introduced. A static method is similar to a static field because it belongs to the class. If a method or field is static, it does not need an instance of an object to call it. Instead, the class itself can be used to invoke the method or field. Instance methods, like fields, can be used by every instance of a class. A method is assumed to be an instance method when the keyword static has been left out, which is implied syntax. Let's look at that restaurant program again. Open the hostess class and change the greet method to an instance method by removing static like this. Compile the class and then go to the restaurant class and compile that. What happens? A compiler error occurs. This is because the greet method is no longer a static method, therefore it cannot be invoked by the class itself. So now we need to create an object or instance of the hostess class to call to the method like this. Here, anyone is a variable that holds or points to an instance of class hostess. It's a lot like party, which is a variable that holds an instance of the int primitive data type, even though we don't use the word instance for primitive data types. Don't worry if the meaning of the difference between static and instance and when you're supposed to use each is a little unclear to you at this point. This is one of the trickiest things about object-oriented programming. Focus on learning the rules and tinkering with how you apply them in your programs. Over time, it will become more and more clear. It's okay to get it wrong. The best indication you're learning is when you write some code and then think of a better way to structure your program. Go rewrite it. That's part of the process.